Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumper here. Uh, 31st of July today, unbelievably, in August already. So it's our time of the month. It's the monthly pickups video. Loads of titles this month. I thought it was quite a quiet one, but when I laid it all out in front of me, now there's loads there. A lot of it does consist of Severin and Vinegar Syndrome titles that I have showed off on separate videos. So, you know, you can skip past those if you want. Um, but yeah, on the ones I've seen, I'll give a bit more info on them. So if you are interested in knowing a bit more about some of them, then stick around. All right then, so as always, start with the DVDs. Only got one DVD this month because, um, I don't know, man, I can't keep stocking up on DVDs and filling my shelves. It doesn't look like i got much here, but I got eight of these squares in this shelf. Eight of them, they're stacked three deep with films. And most of the shelves have got films on top as well, you know, like so, like that. So there's nearly 700 films on these shelves. Um, I really wish I could get a more, you know, single layer spread and it would look a lot better, a lot more impressive. But at the moment, I just haven't got the room. So, so yeah, I've got to count in on the DVDs or there'll just be no room left for the, the nice 4Ks and the Blu-rays. So this is Dark Harvest, okay? This is um, an old movie. It's two films on one disc or, you know, in the pack. Dark Harvest is a shot on video um scarecrow type horror very low budget and then the other one is called escapes and it's um an anthology six short stories and they're narrated by the main man vincent price i haven't got into watching this yet but i do really want to see it so that's dark harvest and that's the only dvd i got so um blu-rays um we'll work through them now and just sort them out into the piles so first one then uh peter cushing um donald pleasance the uncanny this is a horror anthology movie, kind of follows a cat round to different um, places. And then you've got the different stories. Um, I haven't got around to watching it yet. Um, I did put it on, I fell asleep, that's why I was out of the cellophane, but I need to go back to it. So, The Uncanny. Just to say, Peter Cushing, probably my favourite actor ever, so gotta have it. This is a good movie. This is on Severin, this is called Siege. Uh, this has sort of um, elements of judgement night, things like that, from the 90s. Um, got some very strong homophobic language at the beginning so if you've got triggers with that you don't want to watch this film they'd never get away with saying the stuff they say in this now but it's a good film nonetheless you know when these people get their comeuppance you know big smile on your face because they're such assholes you want them to die so they've been this guy basically like he's holed out in this um flat with these other people you know and these gangsters are after me only after the one guy but obviously when he gets holed up in the flat then you know they're after everybody in there i guess just to get to him so yeah really good film um Definitely worth checking out. One of the better ones on um, Severin, that's for sure. Siege. Then we've got the George C. Scott um, classic, The Changeling. One of the best slip covers I've ever seen. I haven't opened it yet, but I've seen this film tons of times. Got the foiling on the right in and some gold foiling on the um, wheelchair. Really well put together by Severin. So, yeah, really looking forward to tucking into this one again one day soon. The Changeling. Then we've got the Italian Crazy Splatterfest. Burial Ground, I haven't opened this one up yet. Um, I have seen it. Well, I haven't seen it, but I've seen bits of it. I know a lot about it. Like, you know, this guy being 30 years of age, playing a kid and being breastfed in the film, stuff like that. But my good man, um, Trev, over at Double Bill Movies, said that there's a lot more zombie action in this than you may expect. So definitely worth the watch. So yeah, Burial Ground. Okay, so we've got Cannibal Man from Severin. Again, I haven't opened this one yet. Um, I... John over at Mondo Chalabek originally put me onto this movie, but then I've been watching quite a lot of American um, collectors and they all say it's good as well. So it's not really a cannibal movie in a sense. I think it's more about the guy who's chopping people up and selling them as meat, I think, similar to that new film, Fresh. But um, obviously, you know, different to that film. Um, so yeah, looking forward to watching that sooner rather than later. Cannibal Man. I've got a week off work next week, so I may get around to some of these, but then my kids are off as well, so I don't know for sure. All right, then we got another Severin release, Midnight, Wicked Slip, even though I may prefer the artwork on the um, case instead. The zombie ghoul drinking. But then it's a bit jarring on the back because it looks more like a blooming action film on the back of the slip. But um, I haven't got in to watch this, so I don't even know what it is, to be honest. So yeah, Midnight. Okay, then we got Day of the Animals. Okay, nice, nice side loading slip on this one. Oh, no, it's not side loading, sorry, push it up. I haven't taken it out of the cellophane yet, so I haven't watched it. 
Um, this has got Leslie Nielsen in though, and he's supposed to be badass in this. There's a screen grab of him with his shirt off and his muscles bloody protruding, and he's soaking wet, looking like he's going to kick some ass. So I had to get it when I seen that. So, Day of the Animals. And then, in line with that movie, then, is a similar film. Lots of creature features in the late 70s, early 80s, trying to um, latch on to the success of Jaws. So, this is probably the closest one, you know, as a copycat goes. Grizzly, or maybe Orca, I suppose, because it's in the sea. But um, this is Grizzly. All right, it's got a lovely slip, lovely design on the back with the bear. Oh, yeah, the end. I haven't seen this yet, but the end of this movie is supposed to be wicked. One of the best endings in movies. So, um, yeah, I look forward to that. Uh, this is a random one here. I got this in a pound land when I went on holiday for a pound. It's called Red Hill. Seen this um, at a festival about 12 years ago. It's got Ryan Quantin, who I liked when I was growing up as a kid. I used to watch Home and Away. And Ryan Quantin used to play a guy in it called Vinny. And I used to think he was like my hero when I was a kid. I don't know why. But, um, you know, um, a long time ago that was as well. So it took a long time for him to get into Hollywood, really. But anyway, this is set in Australia, his hometown. He's a sheriff and he's new. He comes back to his old, old home to be the sheriff and some violent gangster escapes prison. And, um, yeah, it's him against... Him against him, basically. There's your two guys. He's got some um, use of animals in it as well. He's like a panther. An old sort of story arc with a panther. Um, it's really good. So, yeah, it's a bit of a modern-day Western, I guess. Australian Western. So, Red Hill. Check it out if you want to see something a little bit different. This is a movie you want to check out if you want to see something a little bit different. I did not know what this was. This is an Australian kids' film. Sort of from the 90s, that sort of Nickelodeon style. And apparently when it came out, it traumatised kids. So I just bought it now. It's on the Severn Kids label. It's called The Peanut Butter Solution. So yeah, so this movie's up. But this kid, he has an accident and he loses all his hair. And it's like this weird couple. Like, they, I don't know if they're like a witch and a wizard or whatever. They give him this um, spell like this... Um, well, peanut butter solution to rub on his head for his hair to grow back. And he, he balls his up the um, ingredients and his hair just don't stop growing. So he's walking away like Rapunzel in school and all like, And even like when they cut his hair, it keeps growing back and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just hilarious. And he, he gets kidnapped by this guy because he wants to use his hair um, in a toy factory for like making paintbrushes and hairs on dolls, whatever, would need a bit of fur, like, you know, so, but yeah, it's really good, it wasn't very scary, so don't be put off, if you want to sit there with your kids and watch it, but so uh, yeah, it was just, it was just funny, the peanut butter solution, check it out, but the uh, recommendation, this is another one that I want to check out, it's supposed to be a bit crazy, it's called The Devil's Ring, it's got William Shatner in it, like, um, and Tom Skerritt, John Travolta in it as well, but um, Shatner's supposed to be hilarious in this, like, spends half the movie with his top off, Finding these devil worshippers, like so. The artwork's crazy, you might not get a very good view of it on you. Um, a lot of my videos are coming out a bit softly, I don't know why, but um, yeah, it looks all sorts of nuts. I feel here, dude. Uh, this is another one that looks all sorts of nuts from Intervision. It's called The Halfway House. This movie was recommended to me, and it was only like about six or seven quid in the sale, so I grabbed it. It's um, like some sort of alien movie creature feature with good practical effects. I mean, this alien that takes over a dorm, I think. In a, like a university or whatever you want to call it in America. Um, yeah, first time ever on Blu-ray. 70s exploitation meets 80s splatter. Yeah, so I'm going to check this out very soon and I might do so. I'm going to start doing some more small reviews. I did stop doing the reviews because they don't get a lot of hits. But then I was watching um, Dan's Man Cave and he had a bit of a rant about the current state of content creating. And I had to agree with certain things, you know, where he said it's gone more about... Um, the love of the film and more about just who can get their hands on the best um, you know, who can afford to go out and buy the most stuff that's what it's come down to it shouldn't when I started this YouTube channel you know my main aim was to talk about movies it wasn't to show off what I got but you can't deny that doing your hunt videos and these sort of videos they do get the most views so you can see why people do do it I'm trying to find a medium I am so I'm going to start doing small reviews if, if only 10 people watch them only 10 people watch them um, but I'm going to start doing a few more, so keep an eye out if you're interested. Killer Crocodile, and then on the back, Killer Croc 2. So this is a double pack movie, which I didn't know. I thought I was only buying Killer Croc when I bought this, so that was a bonus. I get two films for the price of one. Wicked artwork on the sleeve, another one of these Sandy's creature features. I'm just going to have to do a binge on these creature features. I have to just do a Saturday or so and watch them all. Because yours, I oh know it's not actually, I thought this was another one, but this is The Beast Must Die. This is an amicus who done it actually. It's not a creature feature. A lovely slip on this, really tight though, the slip. Gosh. Anyway, Day of the Beast, good film. Love Amicus. 
I haven't got back to this one yet, but great set, three disca retribution. Old 80s horror, I think it's from the 80s anyway. Um, Relentless Squishy Joy. So it sounds like it might have some cool practical effects in it. Um, yeah, so I haven't watched this one yet, so I couldn't give you anything about the film, but this will be another one that I'll slip into my review videos when I do them. They won't be long drawn out reviews, you know, I'll probably like review three films on one video that I watched over the last three nights. Quick two minutes on each one, like, you know. I uh, don't cast myself as a critic, like I'm certainly not Mark Kerbold or the Anton Bittell, that's for sure. Um, all right, I've got a couple of premium collections, they're two for 15. You'd expect me to have four, but I only got three because I bought the same film twice, like a knobhead, so i got to take it back. So that was The Haunting. If I, I don't know where I put the other one too now, not that it matters really. Oh yeah, here it is. So I bought two of the same, so I've got to go over to my local HMV and take that one back and swap it for something else. I was going to swap it for Scarface or Judgment Night, but I think I might get, um, ah, what's it called I was going to get? I think I might get Soylent, Soylent Green instead, because they've been telling me good things about that film. So this is The Haunting, Side Load and Slip. I watched all these premium collections as soon as I bought them. I really underrated this collection. They look amazing, like the picture quality with these old films. I can't help but like get bowled over every time like you watch them, you think, oh, that's the best I've seen, transfer-wise, of an old film. And you put the next one, you're like, whoa, and you put another one, you're like, bloody hell, what have they done with that? You know, so this was really, really good. A good film as well, fair dues. I enjoyed it. Then the other one, another one I got in the premium collection, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Watched this one straight away as well. Again, really enjoyed it. Bit of a sad ending. Um, this has got one of the old school aspect ratios with the black bars down the side, because it was only a 70s TV movie. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The special effects are a bit thin, you know, um, with the, the small people, you know, they're just like big people with like um, household objects made big behind them to give the impression they're big, really. But um, whatever, you know, it was still good. Don't be afraid of the dark. And then I watched this one. This was probably the best of the three premium ones I bought. Um, the Hidden. So I watched this yesterday or the day before. Really good. Forgot how good it was. Real good use of practical effects towards the beginning when you first see the alien parasite go out the one mouth and into the other. Unfortunately, you never see it again in the entire film. So it would be better if they slow build it and then show you more at the end instead of at the beginning. Because they show it to you at the beginning and it just leaves you wanting more that you don't get. But that's okay. Some cameos. Danny Trejo was in it. Uh, Lynn Shea was in it. So, you know, alongside your normal cast of Kyle McLaughlin and... Um, Michael Norrie from Flashdance. He's pretty good now, actually. I did like his street screen presence, i got to be fair. Um, so yeah, this was really good. I really enjoyed it, The Hidden. Oh, just to say, I spilled a bloody cup of tea all over the bloody slip, so it's all coming apart already. So that was a bit frustrating, but hey-ho, don't have a cup of tea around your prized possessions. All right, some more um, Severin and Vinegar Syndrome. This is The Uninvited. I haven't watched this yet. This is about a cat inside a cat who goes killing people so like the cat's nice i think and then uh, an evil cat comes out of him kills people and goes back into him but i haven't watched it yet so i can't say but it's like a team as well there's about a load of teens on a boat so you know it looked got a bit of an italian feel when you look at the front like an italian 70s but i don't think it is i think it is an american slasher film with a killer cat so yeah on that this is another one that looks awesome body melts this is what i'm saving for when i go up my friends for movie night because we sort of watch these gross out Features like a bit better than joint watching things you've got to really get into. You know, we'll watch um, Dead Alive, things like that, Brain Dead, whatever you want to call it. Evil Dead movies like that, you know. So, yeah, this looks really good. Body melt, I don't know if you can see the screen grabs on the back. But you've got this sort of image of this guy with all these gross things coming out of his mouth by there. So, yeah, it looks all right. It is Australian, so it is in the vein of Brain Dead. So, I look forward to watching that. I wanted to watch this one as soon as I got it, but I still haven't got into it. This is Don't Panic. This is like the Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff from South America in the 80s. But I say it's a ripoff. It's more of an old than a ripoff. I think it's a pretty good movie. It's famous for this kid wearing these pyjamas. People buy these pyjamas now and wear them to conventions and things. So, um, yeah, I look forward to watching that. And I might even get myself some pyjamas. Dinosaur pyjamas. This was a great one. I watched this one when it first came. All American Murder. So it's like Christopher Walken in. This is about a guy who's wrongly accused of killing a girl. And then he's... Um, got to, you know, uh, prove his innocence. It makes me laugh a bit because they all think he's the killer and Christopher Walken, who's the main detective, instead of arresting him when he gets his hands on him, he's like, oh, I give you 24 hours to run around and try and solve it, even though I'm the detective and you're the main suspect. We just let you, we just let you shoot off for 24 hours. But uh, yeah, it's good though. Like, there's some cheese, but it's good. There's some good kill set pieces as well in it. So, um, yeah, All-American Murder, worth a watch. 90s, um, 
I don't want to say cheese, but like just sort of nineties preposterous um, serial killer type movie, I suppose. This was a good one. Glad I bought this and someone recommended me. Shallow Grave, the slip is amazing. The purples on here with the dead bodies by there is really eerie, but really cool as well. You've got the main girl here. So this is about these girls and they witness this crazy ass sheriff kill someone. And they, they're only driving through town to get the California or Florida, wherever they're going. And then, yeah, then this sheriff yunts them down. He sort of, he finds a good way of getting them stuck in the town, like by, um, you know, messing up their car. And um, yeah, it's, it's really good, really cat and mouse. I really enjoyed it. Um, production wise, not amazing, mind you. Know, it looks a little bit cheap, but you know, you just go in expecting seventies grind out and exploitation. So um, yeah, I really, really. There's one scene in this actually is a headshot. The girls running through the woods, and the the, the sheriff's a bop, and it it looks really impactful. It's not overloaded with blood or anything, which is better. Really, it looks way more realistic. But um, yeah, really good film. Got a selection here. I got this on the Amazon Prime Day deal. Good that I didn't get the second site limited edition when it first came out. They have got it in CX, but the box is a bit battered and it's going for like 40 quid. So I just thought, you know what? Just get it on the normal Blu ray. I know what you did last summer, all three movies. These are just sort of movies that any horror collector has in the collection, and they, you know, they're not amazing, but they just got a certain um, nostalgia value, you know, a certain place in your heart. Well, if you grew up the same time as I grew up watching films anyway, like, so really enjoyed these when I was like 15, 16, whatever. So that's all three of them. I know what you did last summer, and that's the second sight. Second sight. 88 films. My apologies. It's the 88 films released. So I got the other 88 films release of. Um, uh, while well, the film's called Urban Legends, so this is going to have to start in next. Like I said, I couldn't get the limited edition, so it's just the way it goes. Then I got this amazing box, and I did promise someone, I think it was Rob Dunlop on my comments, that I would review these when I watched them, but I just haven't had time yet. I think I'll get to do it this week, though. So, three director TV movies that you probably haven't heard of. Um, one of them's got Sharon Stone in. So, Are You Alone in the House? Let's try to this. Are you alone in the house? It's terrible with the sound because it's so shiny on the light. Um, what's that one called? Child in the Night. And the Calendar Girl Murders. That's the one with Sharon Stone and someone else in it as well. Is it Tom Skerritt? Uh, yeah, it is Tom Skerritt. Oh, right, so that's a wicked set. I bought that, you know, on packaging alone. But I do love um, straight to TV movies, whatever we were really, apart from stupid sci fi ones with ridiculously crap CGI. But um, yeah, you know, these sort of more stripped back ones, like one location ones or whatever, you know, they don't take a massive budget, but they can still be really good. Um, so yeah, Telefy's Terror Volume 1. So I look forward to going Volume 2 of that if it comes out as well. So this is from 88 Films. I got this on Prime Day, 15 quid. I had my eye on it a while. Never seen it, so don't really know what I'm expecting, but it looks messed up looking at the back. Robotrix. Some Asian robot movie. Okay, so you've got your film, your booklet, pop, probably a poster and art cards. I haven't opened it yet because I won't open it till I watch it. Looking at the back, you've sort of got this sort of woman in the top corner here with the robotic legs. So I don't know if it's some sort of mad scientist thing going on or what, but um, yeah, it's going to be batshit crazy in it because it's Asian. And it's certainly made in a time when they were making crazy stuff as well, 1991. So, yeah, robot tricks. Look forward to watching that. This one should have been on my last haul video, really, but it was pushed back. So it's the Amateurville collection. Um, it's got four films in here. Originally, th I originally thought it was parts four, five, six, and seven, which would make sense. But it's not. It's parts four, six, seven, and eight. There's one called The Curse that sits in between um, Evil Escapes and All About Time, I think. Don't quote me on it. You have to look at it, look at the timelines on Google if you really want to know. But there's definitely one in between here. Um, but there's no con continuation anyway or continuity. It doesn't matter. They're standalone movies. So it's only really the collector in me that wants to get the number five. It doesn't have any impact on owning this set. So I am going to get all the Amderville horrors and I'm going to do a ratings video. Um, I'm not a massive fan of them, but I don't think it's been done really. And I do own a lot of the movies now. I've got three or four more. And then we're there. So... Um, yeah, look out for that if you like the Amateur Bill. Alright, so that's all my Blu-rays and the odd DVD. So everything else now is 4K, I'm pretty sure. There's more here than I thought. I thought I had a quiet month, but I mean, obviously that vinegar syndrome and severing hole pushed it over the edge. But first one then, Alex de la Iglesias, 
The Day of the Beast. Okay, I haven't watched this yet, but I have seen it before. Wicked Spanish horror. Same director as Witching and Bitching, and another film I'm going to show you now. So he is a good director. Um, I don't really know even know what this is about, to be honest. They don't give nothing away on the cover. So yeah, Day of the Beast 4K. And his direct, same director, Petita Durango. So yeah, looking forward to watching this with um, Rosie Perez and Javier Bardem. Couldn't remember her name then, Rosie Perez. One of my favourite actresses from the 90s. Um, yeah, so Petita Durango. I haven't watched it yet, but it just looks awesome. I love these sort of Mexican-American gangster films. So hopefully you'll live up to what I expect. I like Dead Heat. I watched this one in 4K with um, Treat Williams and Joe Piscopopo, or whatever his name is. Um, I didn't have that great a time with this, but I know a lot of people say it's a fun movie and it's good. I thought it was all right. Um, pacing was good. It didn't take long to get going, I've got to be fair. like. But the ending was just so cheesy and some of the action wasn't the best. But it was all right. It's a fun time, but I'd struggle to give it any more than 2 out of 5, really. Dead Heat. And then we've got some imagery on the back there as well. Another 4K I haven't watched yet. Wicked Slip Cover, Ebola Syndrome. Um... Uh, as is from Swamp the Syndrome as well. I need to be in the right mood for this sort of movie. I think it's going to be quite a hard watch. I think it's quite graphic. So, um, I mean, when I'm in the mood, I'm going to lap it up. But, um, yeah, I just got to be in the right frame of mind. So, Ebola Syndrome. All right, I watched this one. I can't believe I used to think this was a kid's movie because it's far from it. But I used to watch it when I was a kid. Beastmaster. I used to think this was a kid's movie. Maybe they used to show an edited version on Tally. But, no, there's boobs and all in it. Um, it was good. I loved it, but um, yeah, different to how I remember. So this is a vinegar syndrome, at least this is amazing, okay? It comes with a disclaimer at the start on the screen to say that some of the film stock was just way too damaged to do anything about. Wicked artwork on there, look absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, you can see some roughness when you're watching it. Like there's bits where the sky's blue and then all of a sudden in the corner, like damage on the screen, it'll just go, it'll just sort of go pink, sort of up by ear. Like the sky will go pink. Or like the rock formation, there'd be a nice brain, and all of a sudden the rocks at the top of the screen would be like grey. Um, and yeah, it's not really that off put in mind. It don't happen that often, but it's just there as a warning. But then on the flip side, when it's at its best, oh my god, this is probably one of the best 4Ks I have ever seen. Seen at the end where they're cutching on the rock face and the camera pans up. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Um, yeah, the work that must have gone into this, I tell you, this is the one, honestly. If you're into your 4Ks and you're um different tra you know your good transfers and whatever like um this is the one the beastmaster i'm telling you it looks wicked when it looks wicked um and even when it's not looking the best it still looks really good it's just sections of the screen that don't look great so yeah all in all one of my favorites of the year this is might be my favorite of the year release although it might have come back last year because i got it in the sale but still one of the best i've seen i watched this last night actually i've been gagging to watch it for a while so um the time came and i was um Dial Code Santa Claus, Deadly Games. So they say that um, this influenced Home Alone, even though um, Chris Columbus won't admit it. I'm not sure it did. Um, I can see where they're getting it from, you know, but, uh, you know, a kid being stored and standing up for himself is not a wayward um, idea for a movie. So I very much doubt Home Alone was massively influenced by this, to be honest. But, um, yes, yeah, so you've got this kid here, like, and um, his mum works in a department store. And she sacks the um, department Santa Claus because he, he smacks a little quick kid across the face because she said he's not real. So she sacks him and then he finds out where she lives and he goes to get some revenge. I'm not sure what his motive is really, whether to kill the kid or what is all a bit ambiguous because he never really speaks. And he just sort of walks around making his grunting. Sometimes you don't know if he's trying to be friendly with the kid really and the kid's just fucking him up anyway. But um, no, it's pretty good. There's a, there's a bit in this like where they got like a hidden passage because he lives in this massive mansion and it's full of old toys and it looks really good. The, the 4K on this, some of the scenes again, just absolute, absolutely amazing on it. Um, it was a good film. One as good as I thought, because like, everyone was saying, oh, you know, like influenced... Home Alone, better than Home Alone, bloody bloody bad. It's not better than Home Alone at all, but um, it was good. It's all a little bit jarring, that's all. Like, you know, like one scene happens and then it clicks to another scene and you think, well, you know, where's he from there to buy there? Or, and the traps don't really, like, you know, he sets up a trap either side of a doorway. So when he walks in, these two darts are shooting his neck and it's good. But when it happens, you don't see the trap actually, like, completing. All you see is, like, he walks in the door, like, and then the, it's a quick edit and he's just got the dart stuck in his neck. 
So, um, yeah, it could have probably done with a little bit of extra work, to be honest, to make it amazing. But it's still quite good. I probably will watch it at Christmas time, but it won't take over my favourite Christmas horror, which is um, rare exports, definitely. Okay, then. Okay, I watched this one. This is the first one I watched off my Vinegar Syndrome ones. Ticks. I really like this film. I remember it from my childhood with Seth Green and um, Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, wicked artwork on the back there is one of the infected. Look wicked on 4K. Absolutely stunning artwork inside. Slip inside a slip. And loads of different artwork to look at. So yeah, this was really good, okay? Um, it grows on you a bit, Carlton's character. He's a bit of an arsehole when it starts. And you think, oh God, this has been overacted. This is a bit crap. But then he grows on you then. And he becomes like your favourite character in the movie. Um, let down a little bit by the special effects. There's one scene towards the end where the big tick comes. And it looks amazing, but it's like really underused. Um, and then when they get infected throughout the film, it's just like a little bug stuck to them. It, you know, it's not like mind-blowing. Like when you look at this, you think, oh my God, like... But um, yeah, it doesn't quite live up to the promise of the cover. But it was good. It was it was still good, you know. The, the practical effects they tried, like you know, at least. Okay, I haven't watched this yet, but this is Flash for Frankenstein. This has got two versions in the three D version, but that's not four K and the no and the four K version. They give you some three D glasses to wear as well to check it out. I've heard things bad things about this film, but it was a video nasty, I think. So it's going on my list to watch for my video nasty videos that I'm going to be starting soon as well, my video nasty journey. I'm going to watch like five at a time and then review them, tell you why they were banned or probably banned and whether they're really that offensive and whether you should watch it or not. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, but anyway, that's Paul Morrissey's Flash for Frankenstein. And then we've got the Andy Warhol Presents Paul Morrissey Dracula. This is in 4K again. This was released by Seven and the other one was released by Vinegar Syndrome. So I'm not sure what the crack is with that, but... Um, Wicked inside, like open him up. I think it's got a track listing in for a CD. So yeah, fantastic set. Like you know, you really can, you really can go wrong. Again, I haven't seen this film. Uh, it's probably just going to go one or two ways. But um, yeah, I can't bother. Like I say, the packaging's wicked. The ender slips wicked. It's all embossed by there, like with the image. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. There's the bag I don't wish in the bag. Another Wicked 4K, watch this last Sunday, blew my mind. Santa Sangue, Wicked Slip, all embossed, Wicked imagery on it. Um, opens out lovely, nice for, for this set. You know, they really outdone themselves on this one, i got to be fair. If you love this movie, this is the treatment you want. There's your four discs. There's some art cards and stuff covering that disc. But... Um, it's really what you want. Like, it's a weird ass movie, fair dudes. It don't make a lot of sense. But, um, you know, they gave the director of this as well, didn't they? John Orosky, when you're going to direct Doom, and they gave him his budget, and he promised the actor Sal. <laughs> What's his name? Salvador Dali. What's his name? Um, Salvador Dali, is it? Um, and he offered him like a million, he wanted a million pound a day, and didn't they agree to it? And then, like, spent all their budget in about two weeks on Doom. I know it's like, um, uh, like a. What's the word I'm looking for? Like a hot, like a fable in it, like a movie fable that you always hear of, like a myth sort of thing. Like, so, um, yeah, I'm not sure how true that is, but hey ho. All right, uh, then we got Dario Argento's Tenebrae from Arrow. I haven't got into watching this yet, but I have seen it before. Um, wicked set, as always. Probably could have done with filling the space on the back, to be fair. Um, something nice and yellow on there would have looked nice, but um, yeah, you know, still a good set with your booklet and your 4Ks and all. Okay, then this is my newest purchase. Um, it's quite heavy to hold. The Witch. Okay, so I watched the extras on you. Like I said, I was going to do the short. was really good. Um, and the Q&A at the BFI was good. Although we could have gone on a bit longer than that. The guy was hosting it, talking to Robert Eggers and Anya Taylor-Joy. He's like, oh, we'll go ask some questions in the crowd. But I got a few few first answer these questions. And then just said, that's the end. See you later. So feel sorry for anyone in the crowd who wanted to ask a question. But um, yeah, The Witch. So it, it, it looks to be in 4K. I've done some screenshots, but they didn't work out. It's my, my fault, thinking about filming in the dark, thinking it'll look better when it just doesn't. Um, but it did look nice. A cinematography, something else in that movie. Then I got, uh, this was on Prime Day deal. I think I only paid 13 quid for it. So that's James Bond. It's got a slip, No Time to Die. I haven't even seen Spectre and Skyfall yet, but I've seen them in my local CX for £8 each on 4K. So I'm going to grab those two when I get a chance and then I'll just have a Bond binge. And I've seen Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Um, so yeah, I'll be checking that one out. All right, another fairly new one from Prime Day. So I only ended up paying 18 quid for my Spider-Man No Way Home. So I saved £7 on the retail price. 
but obviously I didn't get it quite as soon as everyone else. It grew on me, this film. I was a little bit harsh on it when I came out to cinema, saying it was underwhelming and this and that. And it, I still was a little bit underwhelmed, you know, with the hype train and everything. But I watched it a second time. You know, the scenes with um, with his aunt dying, um, with Happy and all. You know, those scenes, they didn't affect me in the cinema so much. I was just there for the action. But watching it at home, I got more emotionally involved. Um, I enjoyed it more, yeah. So where I originally gave it 3 out of 5, I'll boost it to 4 out of 5 now. It was good. But not the best Marvel movie like everyone makes out of mind. I still think Avengers Assemble or Captain America Winter Soldier is the best. So Spider-Man, No Way Home. Um, you might have seen the video for this. I only done it the other day. It's just a Jumanji 3 disc set. Won't waste much time on it. It only cost me £12. 3 4Ks from Germany. You can't fault it. And then the same with the Equalizer. Only cost me £12 again. Uh, it's a double pack. Um, both on 4K. So Equalizer 1 and 2. First one's great. Second one's a bit over the top. But whatever. Uh, I haven't watched this yet. Uncharted. I think they had a set of things. I went to watch it. And then, as always, one of my kids come out in the movie room saying, Oh, I want to watch the TV. So, yeah, um, Uncharted. So, I am looking forward to watching it. And that's definitely the top of my watch list. Okay, Scream 5. Again, I got this on... No, I didn't get Prime Day. I got a 2 for 30. I got Uncharted on Prime Day, 18 quid. So, that was another £7 save. So, I say £14, really, across Spider-Man and, and Uncharted on the RRP. But they will go down soon, anyway. Um, so this was two for 30 screen. I loved the um, slipcover. I didn't realise I liked this slipcover as much as I did. You need to look at it closely because it's got a slight animation style. It looks photo real from a certain distance. When you get close, it has got an animated style. So yeah, really good. Um, I have already seen it. I haven't watched this 4K yet, so I can't comment on the quality of this disc. But I did watch it in the cinema when it came out and I really enjoyed it. I guess who the killer was is a scene in the hospital um, and something happens and it really gives it away. But you... You've got to see it, like, you know what I mean? It sort of happens, not in the background, but you've got to, like, read the facial expressions. And it was only the one half, and I didn't guess who the other killer was until the very end. But, um, yeah, Scream 5. Yeah, I got this 2 for 30 with Scream 5. This is David Lynch's The Elephant Man. So I didn't realise this starred Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt and Anne Bancroft. So got a good cast. Um, it's the story of, it's the, um, story of John Merrick in it, um, The Elephant Man. Trying to look at the back to see some... Dates. I don't really know when he lived, John Merrick. Was he maybe in the 30s or something? I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, this is only a drama. It's got some horror elements, I suppose. But, um, yeah, vintage classics. Got a lovely slip. I'm sure it's going to look stunning in 4K. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. But that's the elephant man. Then I got Red Sonia with Arnie and Bridget Nielsen. Okay. Um, I've probably said this a million times. But when these old films come out on 4K and they only retail at 1999. I haven't got a problem in buying them. I know some people say, well, 24 99 is only an extra fiver. But I don't know, man. It's something different between paying 25 quid and paying 20. I don't mind paying 20, but it irks me paying 25. I just don't know. So anything that comes out 25 at the Northman, Screen 5, Spider-Man, all that, I'm always waiting for price drops because like you know, I've seen them in the cinema anyway, so I'm not in any rush. So but like I said, Red Sonja, 1999, spot on. Um, just without waffling too much, that's what I'm going to be doing with the new Poltergeist 4K and the new, um, what's the other one coming out? Poltergeist and, oh God, they both come out at the same time. Poltergeist and Lost Boys. So I'm just going to buy the standards. Honestly, I'm not paying 35 quid just to have a steel book and some art cards. It's just not worth it. I'm just going to get the standard titles. 19.99. No one gets hurt. My missus can bitch and moan about me spending too much money on it. Like you're getting both titles for 40 when you're going to be paying 70, 80 for the limited editions. So yeah, so this is wicked anyway. Brand new restoration. I am not here. I'm sure it looks great. But um, yeah, Red Sonia. All right then, then I think this is it. The last one. I haven't saved the best for last or anything. It's just random the way I've done it. But um, I got last Prime Day by Sicario 1 and 2. I think this was a tenner for both 4Ks. I thought that was um, really good. Maybe it might have been 12 quid. I can't remember. But um, there we go. I've seen the first one. Never seen the second one. I wasn't massively mad for the first one when it first came out. You know it had rave reviews. And Dennis Villeneuve is one of my favourite directors. But again, I think maybe I was expecting too much. I mean, I love Daniel Kluwer. I love Emily Blunt. I love bloody um, Josh Brolin, so I don't see what's not to love about this movie, really. But, um, yeah, I'm going to check them out again anyway. So that's two 4Ks here, Sicario 1 and 2. Good set to have. 
Okay then, well I hope you're uh, still awake and I haven't bored you too much. Like I said, moving forward with the channel, I'm going to do some more review mo reviews. What I'm going to try and do is, uh, as soon as I watch a film, I'm going to then try and do the review straight after, so it's fresh in my mind, and then I just edit the videos together. So we might have a video with three or four reviews on. I'll probably be wearing different clothes in every one, but it's just better to do it that way. I don't want to do it individually because you just end up with loads of blooming, you know, crap on the timeline. But um, yeah. I am going to start doing a few, talking about a few more of the movies, especially some of the more um, niche ones I got. Anyway, I've been Bumper. Thanks for watching. And I'll, if you're a regular viewer, I'll catch you Sunday or Monday with my release calendar video. Otherwise, keep an eye out now because I'm off next week. So there may be some stuff on the channel. Oh, oh, before I let you go, listen, listen, listen. I was talking about these shelves earlier. I got 148 4Ks now. So I'm two away from 150. So when I hit that magic number, I'm going to do a 4K collection video. So if you're into that sort of thing, keep an eye on the channel. I'll probably break it down into three videos at 50. All right then, so I've been Bumper. Catch you soon.